and welcome to YouTube, this is Acid Root. So in this particular episode, we're going to return after several years to Wario Blast. This is part 14 of that, it's been since 2021. So this is some leftover 2021 footage. So the thing about this particular game here is the fact that this particular game, I did not anticipate way back in 2015 when I started this game that it was going to take me this long of like a depth to kind of get towards and the reality of it is I still haven't beaten this game yet so this is the final boss here and it's broken up into two segments but I think it, there's like at least another gameplay footage episode that I did after this one and the basic concept about it is is it's just going to be a lot of monotony so if you do it is it just prepare yourself for this basic snackage and not much progress because that's about the only thing this, these real next few episodes have to give but at least it's some content in the field of updating it because it's been since like I said late 2021 before that since 2015 so it's just the concept the real the reality of it was i beat this game way back when i was like 11 and 12 years of age way back in 2001 so i kind of figured i'd be able to do it but i don't know i just kind of got sidetracked in 2015 and then in 2021 i tried and tried i did like three or four gameplay segments and you've seen at least two of those episodes you're going to see it's going to be at least a part 15 and 16 of like 2021 footage that i had this is kind of the concept about it that just was not able to get past this final boss. I may attempt it at some stage, but I'm just not for certain as to whether or not I can even beat this game. But at least you'll get some more slag. You'll at least get some more slag episodes just within the aspect behind it. It's gonna have to say it's like some basic kind of KFC fodder pitches like that. I would almost damn near say if you live nearby like a Taco Bell or something like that, this would be a good concept to go pick up some Taco Bell. I mean. Especially if you're picking it up at like midnight, 1 o'clock in the morning, something like that, and there's just no one in the drive through I would definitely say it would be a good concept. You could probably make like a 6 minute, 8 minute drive to Taco Bell and be back within 17, 19 minutes, and this game would probably still be fighting this boss. I'd say it's a good concept. I'd say try it. You know, give it a shot just to see what I'm talking about. Go get some Taco Bell like right now and come back by at the, the middle or end of episode 15, 16, one of those type ones, you can see what's going to happen here. We're only two minutes into this, so this is kind of the thing about it. But yeah, it's just going to be monotony, a little bit different from the Tomb Raider stuff that's kind of going on around this stage as well. This would have to say, at least that game, you have like the aspect of just being able to, I don't know, it's just a little bit more ambient a game, but I'd say this is just more stock, just kind of get pissed off with the tone behind it. Like I've said before, this is a game that I've broken a Game Boy over. I don't remember the stage that I broke the Game Boy over, but you know, I realized this probably would have been one as well. Just being able to say that. It's kind of the pitch behind us and that actively kind of goes. But... <clears throat> So yeah, it's just basic content here. I don't know if I would do more Game Boy games after I get this game completed. I may try to fire up like the Super Nintendo Game Boy adaptation, see if I can do more of these, but I don't know if I would. There's really not too many Game Boy games I would really be able to be. I remember back in 2015, I do actually own Operation C, which is a Contra game, and I wanted, I might have beat, I think I did actually beat that game with cheats, and it was just kind of the concept, I mean, basically, those games are bastards and a half, just being able to say, like, I, I want to recall that I did some of that back in 2015, I mean, folks can probably see that on my channel, I don't know if I had the videos private or not, but I did do that back in 2015, and I attempted, I could at least beat that, a couple of those stages without cheats, it's basically like, I want to say, the Game Boy version, like Super C for the old Nintendo, but there might be some new stuff in there. They kind of did that sort of stuff. The same thing with like the Donkey Kong Land game for Game Boy, some of those types of ones, just being able to say, as far as those pitches, they would kind of have some new stuff kind of thrown in, but it's just basically like playing those games. But really, I, I don't know how much more, like, I'm kind of unsure of like more Game Boy content. I mean I think this is an excellent game here. It's a nice taste of certain things but you know it's been nine years. You know my thought process and what I have thought about games like back in 2015 is different from what I think in almost 2025 so it's just kind of the pitch behind it whether or not I would still. It's no, it's no offense to like Game Boy in particular but I just look after it. I just think it's probably a little bit more. It's just not super. There might be more games. Of, I would just have to look into it but Maybe like a Ninja Turtles game or something like that. I, once again, I think I said in part 13 way back in 2021 that I would want to do like Final Fantasy Adventure or something, which is a classic, but it's just kind of the concept about it. So, let's look after like the relative tone, but... <clears throat> 
if I had a little bit more patience and like uh, just overall candor about it, I would probably try to attempt like um, Link's Awakening again or something like that because that is a great game. I mean, they've done many things with that game with like the new remake and stuff like that that they've done with some of those games, but a lot of these are just they're they're just retro, you know, they're painstaking games that are just like more hard knock type appeal behind a lot of these. Just kind of the cons that you have to belly up or regret not bellying up kind of thing. But yeah, and like the previous episode, I think you saw that I actually did beat the boss. It was kind of like a new kill just because you look after it that I got killed in addition to killing the boss. But it really, it wouldn't have mattered anyways. In some games, I do like that some games would at least reward like a new kill. Like if you die, as long as you kill the boss before you die, it might give it to you if you manage to finish your dying sequence before the, the stage lineup actually ends. I mean, I would think within the essence behind it that you would think that there has to be. I mean, I realize for like the mid, the early 90s, it probably wouldn't reward that, but there should be constants for at least being able to do it where you beat the boss, but you kind of died in the process, and they still give it to you if, if your dying sequence outstrips the boss's death sequence or something like that. It would be a good concept for that, but... It tries to say, hey, no ties, no losing. Win, lose, or draw, there's only one option, that's win. That's, you know, it's idiotic, but it's kind of the thing. So, basically, there's just no pussyfooting around trying to get through with this game. You have to completely knock him out, but... <clears throat> so I just look after But this missile that keeps being fired here is kind of a concept, because the key towards it, just to be able to say that, is... He, only when like his slot opens, the only real concept of being able to damage him. But the problem with it is he only opens the slot when a missile gets destroyed. So you have to know to be able. That's kind of what's being so tricky. Is just trying to figure out the pattern as far as doing it. So you have to. They at least give you the remote bombs and things like that. But you do have to have like the patterning sequence of being able to do it. And you do have a time limit, which I'm not paying as much attention to either. Which is kind of the thing. I don't think I would have been in any danger running out of time, but this being able to say and stuff that this is kind of the concept they kind of are expecting to be figuring out this process, but this is not a pattern that I suggestively was able to figure out appropriately. And I'm almost thinking that like the key towards it is not necessarily doing like the line of bombs where if you press like whichever button, the B or the A button, and you grow up for them. I don't think that that actually helps that much. I think you just need to, like, uh, what would be really helpful would be a remote bomb or something like that. Just being able to say some of those. But you have to basically, um, you have to basically know when the slot is going to open as far as damaging him. So you have to knock out the missile in addition to damaging him at once. It's kind of like multitasking within this game as far as having two enemies that you have to knock out and do it correctly which is you know I just I was attempt I do in a later episode you'll see that I do get past the final boss later but the problem with it is, is getting to that boss you have to beat this boss knock him out three times then you have to not die and you only have one hit that you can take with the next boss and it's just kind of the concept about it that I, I don't remember what that, we'll find out in a later episode as to the process behind that, but just between, I don't know, certain video games can piss you off when you have like a marathon boss where you have to fight the first form and then the second form happens and then you have to beat both forms in the same go. I mean, I it's not, I don't want to say it's full bone cheap, but it, this is kind of the concept that it just, it's, it gets aggravating because they don't give you a password to just be able to beat both. And it is kind of the concept that I mean, that's kind of like, when I did the Super Punch-Out playthrough back in 2021, that was a real royal pain. I was just trying to talk about that, just because if you lose, if you get a game over in the special circuit, you have to beat all 16 of the characters all over again to get back to the special circuit. You just cannot lose in that. And it's the concept, so you basically have to beat all four of the last characters in that game, just kind of within the same fashion. There's just not many people, I think, especially nowadays, that can do that. You may find, like, the occasional one, but it's probably, like, about maybe one in 5,000 or 8,000, something like that. The standard person who can beat, like, Super Macho Man is pretty damn tough. I mean, I feel like most people probably would not be able to handle him, and he's not even in the last circuit of that. 
this being able to say like the Bruiser, the Rick, and the Nick Bruiser is just kind of the cause. Both of those guys are pretty tough. And then you have to, I mean, the final one, which is, I don't remember if it's Rick or Nick Bruiser, but he can knock you out just in like two or three hits, sometimes one hit. So this is kind of the cause that you have to, I mean, you have to be in prime, pristine form to be able to knock out all four enemies without getting a game over with only like two lives of this kind of thing. But yeah, we'll talk about this more in the next few episodes, so subscribe for more fun. Thanks for watching. Have a wonderful night. And yeah, we're going to get back to some of these.